The Staircase Owl Theory. Is there anything to it? The judicial procedures against author Michael Peterson for the alleged murder of his wife Kathleen are one of the most infamous and well-recorded criminal cases of our time. It has been the subject of two Dateline segments, a lifetime feature, an extensive documentary film series, an HBO limited series, and hundreds of true crime television shows and podcasts. It is colourful, flavoured with drugs and alcohol, filled with a continuing adulterous romance with a male prostitute, and drenched in copious amounts of blood. It also gave rise to a defensive hypothesis that seems like a joke. The owl did it. Welcome to Bad Things. It is not a joke. And even though the owl theory, which asserts that a barred owl was responsible for the series of events that led to Kathleen Peterson's death, was excluded from the trial, the far-reaching theory still exists. The motivation for Peterson's guilt given during the 2003 trial was an unusual combination of Peterson's intention to cash in on his wife's life insurance policy and a violent argument between the pair when she realized he was having a long-term homosexual affair, which led to her death. At 2.40 a.m., her husband said he discovered her motionless corpse on the steps of the family's residence. Michael Peterson's purported murder weapon, discovered in the Peterson's garage and presented late in the proceedings, was finally thrown out due to a lack of forensic evidence and the fact that it had been sitting in the same position for a long time before and after her death. Peterson was convicted and sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. A court ordered a new trial in December 2011 after deciding that a key witness had misrepresented his forensic ability and provided materially misleading and deliberately false testimony on bloodstain evidence. Peterson has been a free man since the day that decision was made. If not for the prosecution's error, the case may have gone in an entirely different direction, blaming an owl. But how might an owl be responsible for Kathleen Peterson's death? The owl theory proposes that a barred owl attacked Peterson, became entangled in her hair, and caused severe injuries including the removal of a part of her scalp, which began a chain of events that resulted in her death after falling down a flight of stairs. The hypothesis initially surfaced in late 2009 when Peterson's friend and neighbor, attorney Larry Pollard, re-examined the case evidence. Her autopsy showed seven lacerations, including particularly deep ones in the back of her head, as well as pine needles adhered to one of her hands both of which included clumps of her own hair. Pollard found that the victim's left hand strands of hair had three tiny feathers in them. In fact, Pollard and several ornithological specialists noticed that the pattern and form of the incisions on Kathleen Peterson's skull show a weapon that was not a fireplace tool. If the perpetrator was an invader, evidence pointed to the barred owl, which is a common species in Durham. The theory was even considered by Michael Peterson's lawyers if he was to face a second trial. The keyboard detectives weren't so sure that this defense would fly, though. The consensus was that these feathers could have come from anywhere, including pillows or duvets. As one contributor said, it was actually microscopic feather fragments that were found and were never identified as any species of bird. They could have just as easily been from a pillow, an old bird's nest, or any number of sources. If the hypothesis was brought to court, they would depend on Pollard's vast research on owl strikes on people, as well as the evidence of experts such as Kate Davis, executive director of the Montana-based organization Raptors of the Rockies. Davis was interviewed for a report about a local raptor attack on a youngster who had been sledding about the same time that Pollard was investigating the owl theory. Later, Davis got a phone call from a member of the documentary crew for The Staircase, the Emmy-winning series covering the Peterson case. 
The producers had conducted their own research, but they needed the help of an expert on owls, someone like Davis. Davis was sure that an owl had attacked Kathleen Peterson, putting in motion the circumstances that led to her death at the foot of the staircase, after examining the evidence. She based her conclusion on the form and location of the victim's wounds, which matched how the owl's talons would hit the season of the attack. In December, when owls are mating and fiercely territorial, the existence of the little feather, since owl's feet are covered with feathers, and the impact power. According to a 2014 paper published in the Journal of Experimental Biology, an owl weighing less than one pound may swoop on a mouse with 150 times the rodent's weight. If a 175-pound person were struck with the same force, it would be comparable to being struck by a 13-ton truck. Undoubtedly, an owl attack may inflict blunt force trauma. Mrs. Peterson weighed 120 pounds, and the suspect bird in the owl theory, an adult barred owl, weighs between one and two and a half pounds and can fly up to 40 miles per hour. Obviously, the truck simile is outside the scope of a raptor's strength, but the conclusion is clear. An owl's attack may produce blunt force trauma. In addition, raptors are known to dive bomb people when they feel threatened, attacking the head almost invariably. In 2015, for instance, there were many barred owl attacks on joggers in an Oregon park. The victims of these attacks, which gave the birds the moniker Owl Capone, sustained many quarter-inch talon lacerations. Davis further notes that the victim would have been caught off guard since the owl's feathers, which are serrated on one side to cut through the air and fringed on the other, make it silent in flight. In a March 25-minute interview with Raleigh TV station WRAL, Pollard elaborated on the owl theory. The other wounds that are on her body seem to give a compelling case to this having been done by an owl, he said. The injuries to the eyes and the injuries to the elbows and the little pockmarks on her wrists here and here all are consistent with her having her hands over her head, holding onto her hair because something is grasping that hair. How did it supposedly happen? According to Pollard's timeline, Kathleen Peterson and her husband had been drinking wine in the backyard pool at night. Her blood was also discovered to have traces of anti-anxiety and muscle relaxants, according to the toxicology findings. Kathleen headed to the front yard to arrange some animal-shaped Christmas decorations. This is where the raptor launched its attack. Peterson was out of hearing range while his wife battled the bird. The victim then entered the house. This explains the blood that was discovered on the front stairs and on the inside of the front door. She then ascended the back stairs, likely on her way to the master bedroom, while under the influence of alcohol and tablets. However, when reaching the last step, she slid backwards and landed at the bottom of the staircase. A photograph of the murder scene depicts her with her neck significantly twisted to the left, her head resting on the lowest step, and her body sprawled out in a big pool of blood on the floor. One part of the owl theory does make sense, as asked by a forum contributor. It's confusing to me that the injuries to her head were determined to be caused by blunt force trauma, even though there were no skull fractures. Can someone with more understanding of this explain how her injuries could have been caused by a blunt object, or what would have made them rule that the injuries were not caused by something sharp? The owl theory is intriguing, but I want to know what made the medical examiner decide the injuries were made by a blunt object. She died from blood loss, there were no injuries to her brain. The absence of skull fractures does not fit in with the prosecution's narrative, that Michael Peterson had hit her with the blowpoke. In 2010, the opinion of medical examiner Deborah Radish, who performed Kathleen's autopsy, that an owl or any other bird would not have left wounds as severe as those discovered on Kathleen's scalp, was questioned in three separate affidavits by specialists. 
The specialists were Dr. Patrick T. Reddick, Professor of Veterinary Medicine at the University of Minnesota, Dr. Alan Van Norman, neurosurgeon and owl expert, and Dr. Kate P. Davis, Director of Raptors of the Rockies. Over time, the chief counsel for Michael Peterson has realized that the owl theory is more believable than he first believed. There have been hundreds, if not thousands, of recorded cases of owls attacking the heads of their victims, which convinced Rudolph. Rudolph disclosed Michael eventually accepted the owl theory as a potential explanation for what happened to his wife. He said, he was like the rest of us. I think he dismissed it at first, but again, I think like with me, gradually over time, you start to take it a little bit more seriously, given all the other information that exists. In fact, there's evidence at the scene that tends to support it, and there's certainly nothing that I'm aware of that refutes it or makes it impossible. Maybe Michael Peterson trained the owl to attack. Nothing, even as ridiculous as this statement, is outside the realm of the staircase.